Ladies and gentlemen, here is the latest bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. Seems plenty. The most extraordinary experience, ladies and gentlemen. I can't find words. And, well, I'll pull this microphone with me as I talk. I'm, wait a minute. Something's happening. A humped shape is rising out of the pit. I can make out a small beam of light against a mirror. What's that? There's a jet of flame springing from that mirror, and it leaps right at the advancing men. It strikes them head on. The logs are turning into flames. Now the whole field's caught up by the woods. The bars, the, the gas tank, tanks of the automobiles are spreading everywhere. It's coming this way now, about 20 yards about. What I'm listening to right now is a very grim broadcast. Apparently, Martians are invading the Earth. Or are they? We will find out on a monumental day, Thursday, April 28, 2016. The details can be found in this very special edition dispatched to you to help you prepare for the adventure that you will face on that day. So, keep watching. Extra, extra, read all about it. Martians are invading the Earth. Could this be true? We will soon be delving into a study of The War of the Worlds, featuring the book written by H.G. Wells and the radio play by Orson Wells. We will also read an excerpt from Willie B. and The Time the Martians Landed. We will also play three brand new games. When is this, you ask? Well, it will be on Thursday, April 28th. But what was this all about? Here are some of the background details to help you get up to full speed. On Sunday, October 30, 1938, millions of radio listeners were shocked when radio news alerts announced the arrival of Martians. They panicked when they learned of the Martians' ferocious and seemingly unstoppable attack on Earth. Many ran out of their homes screaming while others packed up their cars and fled, though what the radio listeners heard was a portion of Orson Welles' adaptation of the well-known book, War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Many of the listeners believed what they heard on the radio was real. Before the era of TV, people sat in front of their radios and listened to music, news reports, plays, and various other programs for entertainment. In 1938, the most popular radio program was The Chase and Sanborn Hour, which aired on Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. The star of the show was ventriloquist Edgar Bergen and his dummy, Charlie McCarthy. This is the challenger, Charlie McCarthy. What, what have you got to say, Charlie? It looks like a tough fight, Mom, but I think I'll win. <laughs> On Sunday, October 30, 1938, at 8 p.m., the broadcast began when an announcer came on the air and said, Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations present Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air in The War of the World by H.G. Wells. Though the program began with the announcement that it was a story based on a novel, and there were several announcements during the program that reiterated or repeated that it was just a story, Many listeners didn't tune in long enough to hear them. A lot of the radio listeners had been intently listening to their favorite program, The Chase and Sanborn Hour, and turned the dial like they did every Sunday during the musical section of that program around 8.12 p.m. Usually listeners went back to The Chase and Sanborn Hour when they thought the musical section of the program was over. However... On this particular evening, they were shocked to hear another station carrying news alerts warning of an invasion of Martians attacking Earth. Not hearing the introduction of the play and listening to the authoritative and real-sounding commentary and interviews, many believed it to be real. Across All across the United States, listeners reacted. Thousands of people called radio stations. People went to churches to pray. People improvised gas masks, miscarriages and early births were reported, deaths too were reported but never confirmed. Many people were hysterical. They thought the end was near. Hours after the program had, list had ended and listeners had realized that the Martian invasion was not real, 
The public was outraged that Orson Welles had tried to fool them. Many people sued. Others wondered if Welles had caused the panic on purpose. The power of radio had fooled the listeners. They had become accustomed to believing everything they heard on the radio without questioning it. Now they had learned the hard way. And we will learn the fun way on Thursday, April 28th. For more details about that week with regard to the War of the Worlds and so much more, be sure you tune in to Mr. McCoy's weekly log, issue 34, which will be dispatched to you during the week of April 25th, 2016. You will find out even more of the details of what is to come. All I have to say is, be afraid, be very afraid. And before you come to school on that Thursday, April 28th, be sure you transform yourself into a Martian by wearing green. Ta-da! And when you arrive in Jurassic Park on Thursday, April 28th, expect a very special treat at your workstation. You may partake of that to help set the stage for the fantastic events that will happen on that most momentous day. And in the email that I dispatched to you, there is a link to the Padlet site. Please post your answer to the question that you can find there. And I will see you in the meantime, but ultimately we will be experiencing the War of the Worlds. The best is yet to come.